Okay, our speed controller is now connected and plugged into the PC for PC programming. We're going to go over some quick connections here. Standard, like most speed controllers, you do have to have the speed controller connected to your flight packs. So we've got a couple 5,000 milliamp 6S packs here ran in series to make our 12S setup. Those are connected, as we can see. As standard, we also have our USB cable connected to the speed controller. Follow it all back over here, and it is plugged into the USB on the laptop. Um, when the software is installed, it is going to, the first time when you plug in this USB dongle, it will prompt to install the drivers. Since you've installed the software, the drivers will automatically install at that point. Um, so everything here is connected. As you can see, we've got our battery packs connected up. Now here's a cool feature. The, the speed controller has a built-in cooling fan. Now, the, the cooling fan, as soon as you power up the speed controller, the fan is constantly on. Now, I'm going to be quiet for a second here and get a little closer. And uh, see, this fan is extremely, extremely quiet. Let's listen. Yeah, extremely, extremely quiet here. Very happy with that. Uh, the fact that it is always on is always going to ensure that we don't have any component failures um, that rely on it to hit a certain temperature before the fan turns on. This way we're ensuring that we're getting proper cooling exhausted out of the speed controller for, uh, for better performance. So let's go ahead now. Everything is connected up. Let's go ahead and switch gears and let's go ahead and take a look at the PC software. Okay guys, so we've just shown the speed controller connected to the flight batteries to power the speed controller up. We've showed the USB connection to the speed controller and then the USB dongle connection to the computer. Now we're going to go into the software settings. So the screen we see in front of us here is actually the, uh, the version 5 software for the King Kong 3 speed controller. We'll see some tabs across the top here which we'll get into in a second. But first, we have to go ahead and connect to the speed controller. So on the bottom left-hand corner, we're going to see a couple buttons. The first one is Set Com Port. Go ahead and tap on Set Com Port. You'll come up with the window that says Default Com Port. Typically, Windows will default to the correct Com Port for the device being used. So we're going to go ahead and just click OK at this point. The next thing we'll do is come down here. And we're going to click Open Device. And you'll see what happens is this window is populated with the King Kong 200 amp is what we have. A little more information about that. This is telling us that, hey, the software is now communicating with the speed controller directly. So now we can go to the top here to the tabs. And up here for number two, for parameter settings, we can tap on that. The status is just populated everything. And now we can see a bunch of options here. The first thing we'll see on top is the King Kong series. And we'll see the first thing here is firmware version. Firmware version is just telling us what version of firmware is currently on the speed controller. Next we'll go down to LVC. Now we have a bunch of options here. You can see it does go beyond the 14S, but this is just a software issue. Now we have from auto, and what auto will do is it will auto detect the cell count. So when you have it set to auto, and you power the speed controller on, it's going to initialize and then follow by the individual beats for how many cells it counts. We, on the other hand, can go in now and we can tell it, hey, we're going to use X amount of LiPo's. So we're going to be doing this on a 12S setup. I'm going to choose 12S option on this. This will actually alleviate and skip the beats because we're hard programming into the speed controller. It's using 12S. So there's no need for it to count the cells. So it will do a several tone initialization. Once it initializes, it's good to go. You don't have to wait for beeps. Our next option here is going to be LiPo cell cutoff voltage. This is going to tell us what voltage it wants to tell each cell before it doesn't over discharge the battery pack. So we have options from 2.5 volts all the way up to 3.3. We're going to choose 3.2. It's always what I've used and have best luck with. Now for helicopter use, this next option, which is brake type, we have no brake, soft brake, and hard brake. We all kind of know what these mean already, and as for helicopter use, we're going to choose the no brake option. For cutoff type, we have hard cutoff and soft cutoff. Again, we all know what this means. Soft cutoff, when it has an issue, 
for current limiting or it's getting down to the LiPo cell cutoff voltage, the RPM of the motor will slowly reduce in power. You'll hear it. You know it's time to land. Hard cutoff obviously is going to be, hey, I'm just going to cut power to the motor completely and deal with it on your own. We don't want that in a helicopter use. We'll choose soft cutoff to be on the safe side. Up here we have current limiting. And we have several options. We have sensitive, standard, insensitive, and closed. So sensitive is going to be, hey, this is a 200 amp speed controller. When I start seeing 200 amps continuously, I'm going to go into the soft cutoff mode. Standard mode is going to give you a little more push past 200 amps. If you consistently keep pushing past the 200 or the, the, the 250 amps, I'm sorry, it's going to allow you to do that several times before it goes into soft cutoff. Insensitive, it's going to let you overshoot that max current rating quite a bit before it goes into the soft cutoff mode. And obviously close is, is basically turning this option off, do what you want to. The only issue at this point is you run the risk of damaging the internals of the speed controller. And at that point you're kind of on your own. So we're going to go ahead and choose insensitive as most speed controllers have this option. Always has always have had great luck with it and that's what we'll stick with. Now we have a timing advanced option. Now in our timing advanced option we have several things here. We have a low, middle, high, auto, and then we can actually choose from 0 to 30 degrees in 2 degree increments. Now what this is allowing us to do is set the timing of the, the motor. Now low, middle, and high have some different options. So low will actually automatically adjust from between 0 and 15 degrees. The option 2 for middle here is going to choose from 5 to 20 degrees and then high will be from 15 to 30. If you want to really set a hard number in there and let it stick to it, you can scroll down and choose that option. We're going to go ahead and choose the middle. It kind of corresponds to most other speed controller settings. That's what we'll stick with. Startup type, obviously we know what soft start, standard, and fast start is. We're going to choose for helicopter soft start. You don't want to have that helicopter spinning up super fast and getting whipped around. Now our PWM rate for our motor here, we have again more options. We have 8 kilohertz all the way up to 32 kilohertz. I've always run mine at 12. A lot of people run at 8 or 12, but if you wanted to run higher, you obviously can choose that. Now here's a good option which is active freewheeling. This is option on or off, one or the other. Now in the manual it will recommend to turn the active freewheeling in the on position. This is a great option for speed controllers and for the higher demands of our motors nowadays. Now we'll come over here to the flight mode. Now flight mode we have fixed wing, external governor, and governor. External governor of course is to use the built-in RPM sensor with say your V bar, your icon, scoop, whatever fly barless unit you're using that has a built in governor option, we can use that governor option versus the governor built into the speed controller. We'll go ahead now, we'll choose the governor option, and we'll see on the right hand side some of these options have now opened up. Of course, spool up rate the lower the number, the slower the spool up rate, the higher the faster it is. We're going to leave it on the default 4. It seemed pretty good on the bench for testing. We'll try that out. Governor gain, same thing. How fast do we want the governor to react to changing in head speed? One, obviously the slower. The higher you go, the harder it's going to do it. So we'll go ahead and leave that our option of three. Now our head speed change rate, we have several options again. This is going to be when you go from normal to idle one to idle two with different head speeds, how fast is it going to achieve that level of head speed. We'll put it back at standard. Now down here we have the auto recovery time or auto rotation recovery time. This is the same thing as bailout. We can disable it. We can go either from 10 seconds all the way up to 60 seconds in time. Now since we're going to be using the icon governor, we're going to leave this disabled. Now here's the here's neat thing about this. We have a button here called Throttle Cal. This is actually a throttle calculator. We tap it and open up a new window here. So unlike most speed controllers or some speed controllers where you can set an RPM for your different flight modes, this speed controller doesn't do that. This, however, will create a calculator that will give you a throttle position for that desired head speed. 
So let's say we have a helicopter with a 121 tooth main gear, and let's say a 13 tooth pinion. Let's say we want to run at about 1900 head speed. We're going to say this is a 12S helicopter, so we're going to go 44.4 volts. We're going to say we're running a 495 kV motor, and let's say our motor is an 8 pole motor. We can now hit the throttle position button and see that we should be at approximately a 55% throttle to achieve roughly 1900 RPM head speed. Another cool feature is click the ESC output button. You're going to see now that this is going to tell us that essentially our motor and our speed controller should be doing about 81% of the power output. So this is great because some motors will run better at different percentages. 80 to 90 percent range is one of the most efficient that we've seen. So this is a great feature. So you can check your gearing, check your voltage, your motor KV, and see if you're in that range that motor uh, manufacturers suggest. What you would do at that point is say you want to run 1900 in your idle one position, you would just put a flat throttle curve of 55 percent to achieve that 1900 head speed. And then do the same thing if you wanted to go to say 2000 or 2100 for your idle two. So this is how the throttle calculator works. So we'll click exit on this, and since we're going to be using the icon governor, we're going to put this back to external governor mode. Just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and click the update button. This is going to tell us, do we want to update the settings to the speed controller? Yes. It'll tell us it's done. We hit OK. Now let's go up here to the logger configuration. This is going to set the parameters for how the speed controller records data, flight data. So we have two options here for the cycle record. We have reverse and not reverse. Now the way these two interpret is reverse is going to allow us to continue recording regardless if the memory is full or not. If the memory is full and you're in the not reverse mode, it's going to not continue to record data. It's going to fill up and stop recording. In the reverse mode, what will happen is, is it will basically out with the old and in with the new data. So we're going to leave that at the reverse. Come over here to the sampling rate. This is going to give us options to choose how many samples per second do we want to record. We have options from one sample a second up to 30 samples a second. Obviously, the more samples per second, the less amount of time it will record. We're going to go ahead with the default of five. Leave it there. Now you'll see the flight times. We can't make any changes here. This is basically a flight count, which going to tell us, hey, we have X amount of flight data recorded, and so on. We'll go up here to the Show the Record tab. This is the way to view the log data. Now you can see over here, we can see data like voltage, current, throttle, temperature, motor RPM. Really helpful information when trying to you know, set up a helicopter and see what kind of performance we're outputting. Before you can view data, there's an option down here for user parameter. And it does require to input the gear ratio and the pull count of the motor before you can actually put the upload record data to view the data. Um, when you click this, it will pop a window open to make sure you've entered it. If you haven't, it will tell you to, and then you can do it again. We don't have recorded data, so we're not going to go ahead and do that at this point. But that's how that would work. Our last tab up here is going to be the upgrade tab. You'll see it's populated. What it's done is it's read the current version of the firmware. Once it's read it, we're going to come over and it'll say upgrade file and version of firmware. This speed controller does have upgradable firmware. Speed controller is being sent at this time to have the latest version, but the upgraded version will be available on the manufacturer's website. And we'll also have it on our website as well when they're available. Once that's done, you would go to Brent, download it, go to browse, open it. It'll populate what version the new one is. You would hit start. Now there's a couple things you do have to do to the speed controller when that happens, but we're not going to get into that now until it's time to have an upgrade available, and we'll do a video that shows the connections to make sure it updates properly. But all that being said, we've gone through our tabs here, how to connect, over the parameters, setting up the logging for the data, how to view the data, and how to upgrade the speed controller. So at this point, we've gone over some pretty good setup tips, how to connect the speed controller. Um, there's numerous connectors available. Use what you prefer. We prefer, I should say, I prefer EC5. They're great. Um, another cool feature of the speed controller we've, uh, that I've noticed while playing with it is 
so to speak, controllers you plug in that second six cell pack, and it's almost like you're going to arc weld something. Well, the King Kong 3 speed controller, plug it in that second pack to initialize it and get it to power up, there's a barely a spark on there. Well, with that being said, I don't feel like I'm going to be welding connectors together anymore. Um, it's a great feature, but you have to see for yourself. And we'll probably do a video when we start doing some flight videos, how to you know, connect it, listen to the initialization and stuff like that. But for now, we just went over the software configuration settings, which is what we wanted to do. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave you at that. So until we start our next video and get it out, we'll talk to you all later. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us, email us, call us, go to the website www.mdhelicoptersusa.com. Any questions you have, we can answer them for you. Get the speed controllers ordered up, get them on to you. It's going to be a great, uh, a great addition to the market for RC helicopters and electronics options. Until then, have a good day. We'll talk to you later.